My name is Cassandra Jeffries, and when I was a teenager, I learned that I had a heart defect. I did notice at one time that it was getting harder for me to keep up with my normal lifestyle. My mom ran a daycare, and we helped chase those kids and play with them, and I noticed that it was getting a lot harder to pick up the little ones and carry them around. And so I knew that there was something wrong, and I had gone to the doctor, and they heard that I had a murmur, and they wanted me to get it checked. So I had gone to a cardiologist who, after tests, had, had told me that I had mitral valve prolapse, which basically means the heart can't pump blood from one chamber to the other because it flows back and it's twice as much work for the heart. So then I knew that it was pretty serious and something was going to have to be done. So when I was 18, I ended up having open heart surgery to have that mitral valve replaced. At first, it was disbelief and it was I was 18 you know I we didn't have a family history of it I had never had any other problems and so it was a lot of why is this happening to me you know so then and then it was what's gonna happen you know it's it was really serious surgery so I was pretty scared up until I talked to the surgeon and you know they have they're pretty cut and dry with you it's they laid it out step by step, the actual going in through the sternum and all the things that they would have to do. That's when it hit home, like a couple days before the surgery, that this is very serious. I know that it was because of my family and my friends that I was able to get through it. I would have listened to my, my body signs, obviously. You know, I wouldn't have put off for three, four months saying, Oh, I'm just getting tired. That's okay. I'll just take a rest. I would have been a lot more proactive in my health. I probably have one more surgery still in my future because because I am so young. Life is short and you have to do what you can and the people around you, you know, don't take them for granted. I had wanted to travel and do things, so after this, I became a nanny and went to the East Coast and worked for a couple years with some great families and I don't think I would have done that had this not happened. The biggest thing I'd like women to learn is that it can happen to anyone at any age and it doesn't matter if you have a history of illness, heart disease, that it can happen to you. People should donate to the American Heart Association because it saves lives. It's just that simple. Their research helps save lives, including mine. In the future, I'm looking forward to starting my own family and spending more time with my family and friends. My name is Cassandra Jeffries, and I support the American Heart Association because their research is vital to saving lives, women, and including my own. My name is Esther Domeyer, and I survived a heart attack. My family consists of my husband, and we have uh, Lawrence and we've been married for will be married for 65 years and I have we have two daughters Patricia and Diane we have six grandchildren and five great-grandchildren my heart story was kind of strange I didn't realize I had a heart attack because I uh, had the flu a severe flu in uh, November 1985 and in 1986, I went to a, a bridge uh, party, and I was telling my story, uh, how sick I was. And uh, a nurse that was there knew from what I was saying that I would had a heart attack. She called me the next morning and had set up a time for me to see a doctor. I couldn't believe it. I said, are you crazy? I went to see this doctor, he took an EKG, came back in, told me I'd had a heart attack, and the back part of my heart had da been damaged some. But a doctor told me if I hadn't taken care of myself, I could have died at the age of 40. My greatest fear, I really didn't have a fear. I think I had a lot of faith and I did a lot of praying, and it helped me through. You need to get checked out when you're very ill. It, you, can, you can save yourself a lot of problems if you do this. 
I am thankful that I survived this heart attack and that I've had, that the, there's such good care that is given now. There's a lot of medical procedures that have really helped us. This way I've got to be with my grandchildren and now I get to be with my great-grandchildren and I get to do a lot of things that I wouldn't get be able to do if I hadn't survived this. I want people to learn that it is important to take care of yourself, to do all the right things, to keep your body in a good condition, exercise, eat, eat sensibly, have a good attitude. It's very important that we donate to, so they can continue to in, do more with the medical research. There's a lot of people that need to be reached. I didn't think I was having a heart attack because I said women don't have heart attacks, but they do. Without heart disease research, we, we would have a very difficult time we would not sur survive a lot of this. We need this research to help us, guide us, and help the doctors know what to do for us. Well, I'm looking forward to doing more with my grandkids and kids. Um, we have a great family, and um, maybe I can still do some traveling. This is a special shirt, and I'm very proud of it. I was given this shirt at Columbus Community Rehab which is a very important rehab center. It helped me get through my surgery. Uh, I worked with Penny Burrells, who did a wonderful job. She encouraged me, and whenever I had anything wrong, uh, to ask her about, she was always there. I'm very proud of this shirt, and I'm very proud of Columbus Cardiac Rehab. It is important that you do the rehab after surgery. My name is Esther Dillmeyer, and I support the American Heart Association as we need to continue with more medical technology, improve the quality of life for all women and for all of our generations. Research saved my life. My name is Linda Misek, and I survived a heart transplant. My health heart story started in 2003. I was, I was diagnosed with uh, congestive heart failure. I had been going to step aerobics with my friend and I started noticing I couldn't keep up, but when you're doing step aerobics, it's a natural reaction because you're always out of breath. Well, and then, so I started noticing I wasn't as peppy there and then um, a few days later, I couldn't run up and down the stairs as I normally do. I just had to stop and walk. And I thought right away, oh, there's something wrong. But I waited a week before I went to the doctor because I wanted to make sure it was really, you know, a problem, not just something in my head. And in 2003, on mismatch day, when you dress all crazy, and I'm the queen of crazy dressing, I was in Dr. Schaefer's office, and on mismatch day, um, I was told I had congestive heart failure. The Christmas of 2006, I quit teaching because I... I just couldn't do it anymore and at the urging of two teachers I just said okay this this is it so I went home and um, when I was home I just um, said to I just confided in God I said uh, I'm at home now I don't know what's in store for me but whatever it is I am placing myself in your hands 2007 January 23rd I got a call uh, from the hospital that they had found something wrong with my blood. Well, come to find out it was um, the right side of my heart was now failing. The left side has gone and now the right side was failing. They said, well, we'll probably have to send you home on, on the weekend. And I knew if they sent me home on the weekend, I was going to die. I knew it, they knew it, they didn't have to tell me because I could tell in bed that I was going steadily down. There was no question about it. So I made my mind up that if it came to that, I had a, in my head, I was ready to tell the kids what was going to happen because I was all going to give them uh, a talk and tell them how I felt about everyone before I actually did go. 
My greatest fear was having to tell each of the kids that I was going to die. Uh, but then on Thursday, um, the doctor came at six o'clock in the, in the morning and held my hand and I thought I had, you know, died because he was holding my hand and he was kneeling by my bed, but obviously I was still awake. I didn't die. I was still there. And he said, we have found a heart transplant for you. And it was during Catholic Schools Week and on mismatch day, I got my heart transplant. I found out from some of the nurses that usually when you have a heart transplant, you're um, depressed. I wasn't. <laughs> I looked at it as, well, I, for the donor family, I felt very, very bad, very bad for them because they had to, you know, uh, give up their, you know, son's uh, life. And they, and I am internally grateful to them because I have his heart beating in my body and I treasure that every day. And I was just, basically, I just left everything in God's hands. And, um, and uh, when I did have the transplant, I was uh, eternally grateful. And every day I, I, I thank God a lot that I can breathe because when I couldn't breathe, that, that was the scariest because I fought so many nights just to get through the night. That's all I wanted, just to get me through this night so I can just make another day. So every, even the smallest things, I am eternally grateful that I can now do. And seeing the birth of Addison, that was really awesome. <laughs> it was one of the highlights yeah, of my life. And just con when we're together for holidays, um, I just enjoy seeing each one of the kids sitting at the table. I would want people to learn that people out there really need um, donors, um, there are several people waiting on a list. With all the research that is going on, uh, I think that it's awesome. You, you get to the problem maybe quicker, faster, and they have all these new techniques, so it's really good. My name is Linda Misek, and I support the American Heart Association because without them, I probably would not be here. No